Our job is to find the minimum value of this function subject to the constraint. Classical Lagrange multiplier method problem. Uh, there's something at the end there that says that we need to show that the function has no maximum value within this constraint, with this constraint. And so our job is to take the gradient of f and set it equal to lambda times the gradient of g. The gradient in f is a vector that's full of the partial derivatives, the first partial derivatives of f in order. So we'll have uh, 2x, we'll have 2y, oh gosh, 2x, we'll have 4y, and we'll have 6z. That's the gradient of f. Uh, g is a function that you make from your constraint by setting it equal to zero and so the gradient on g is going to be one two three the equation that is the engine behind lagrange multiplier method is that the gradient of f is lambda times the gradient of g this leads to three different equations number one two x is equal to lambda times one number two 4y is equal to lambda times 2. And number 3, 6z is equal to lambda times 3. All we could do here is solve for lambda in each of these. On the one hand, lambda is equal to 2x. On the other hand, simultaneously, lambda would be equal to 2y. And then all at the same time, lambda would be equal to 2z. So then that would tell us that these have to be equal to each other. This would tell us that x is y. This would tell us that y is z. And we also could see that x and z are the same. That's what we get out of this. That this, this critical point on the constraint is going to be all the values equal to the same value. Let's go into the constraint and figure out what that value is. We have x plus 2y plus 3z minus 10, or equals to 10. And let's go into one of the variables. Let's go into x. We'll have x plus 2x plus 3x must be 10. A little bit of fraction drama. 6x equals 10 that makes x equal to 5 thirds. And of course, y and z are also that. Okay, so we got this point, 5 thirds. And that's the only point that comes out of Lagrange. Your function is two, uh, x squared plus 2y squared plus 3z squared. So the function value at 5 thirds is going to be 25 ninths, 2 times that 25 ninths, 3 times that 25 ninths. That'll give us 6 of those 25 ninths who can be reduced then as 50 over 3. When Lagrange only gives you one value out, what you need to do is pick another value on your constraint. We know that Lagrange gives you extreme. We just don't know if it's extreme max or extreme min when it's only one of them that comes out. And so here's the method to know whether it's extreme max or extreme min. We can find another point on our constraint. Our constraint was that x and 2y and 3z must add up to 10. Well, here's one point. x could be 10 while the other guys are 0. Or y could be 5 while the other guys are 0. 
We only need one point. Let me take that back into the function. And we have, um, in this case, we'd have the function would be 100. Or in this case, the function would be 50. And so, um, these guys are greater than 50 over 3. How could this be extreme maximum if we're getting other constraint values that are larger than it? So this tells us then that we have extreme min. We have the global minimum at 5 thirds, 5 thirds, 5 thirds. And our reasoning is that other constraint values, when plugged into our function, gave us larger output values. And so that means our extreme value must be the minimum. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. It's been a while since I made a video, a math video that is. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much.